Hey, how's it going? Jeff at Deep Cycle Battery coming to you today with another How To Wednesday series. And in this video, I want to talk to you how to convert watt hours into amp hours. Specifically, you have a, a solar panel on your RV or your boat, and you want to know how to size a battery bank given that you know that what this is in watts, DC watts, DC, okay, and you know what your device or your appliance or your loads are measured in watts. Simple, very cool tool, it's called the kilowatt meter. It's very inexpensive, it's probably like 12 bucks. You plug in your appliances to this into a 110 outlet and it tells you what the consumption is of that device. So for, exam for our example, get some paper, if you don't mind, and write down as an example that you want have a television set that has a 65 watt consumption. And you know that you want to run that television for 10 hours. We're going to take those watts and we're going to turn that into watt hours. So 65 times 10 is 650 watt hours. Cool. So, and, and, and if you have multiple, multiple, multiple stuff, you're going to do the math and just calculate all these watt hours and get a summary. But for this example, to make it easy for you, write down 65 watts times 10 hours, 650 watt hours. Now, for most RVs and boats, it's a 12 volt system, and this is a 12 volt battery, okay? 650 watt hours divided by 12 gives you 54.16. Uh, 54.16 is the amp hours that you will need to run that TV for 10 hours. Again, 65 watts over 10 hours, you would need a 54.16 amp hour battery. But we never take a battery discharge to zero because it will destroy the battery. So we need to multiply or double our amp hours. So 54 times 0.16 times 2 gives you about 108 amp hour battery. Okay, they don't really make a 108 hour amp hour battery, so you would size up from that. So you could go to a 120 amp hour battery or above. Having more battery than what you need is never a bad thing. Having less than what you need is always a bad thing. Keep in mind too, your solar panels are in watts. This is, this is a sample of maybe a 100 watt panel. Note that a 100 watt panel will charge a battery quicker than a 50 watt panel. And a 200 watt panel will charge your batteries quicker than a 100 watt panel, etc, etc, etc. And um, so now that we know what our amp hours are for this TV, we know we, we can size that battery. So again, in your example, 65 watt television set over 10 hours produces a 54.13 amp hour battery times two. Now let's talk to you about uh, clouds and rainy days. Right now I'm doing this video, it's raining like crazy. Uh, one of the few days we don't get rain or sunlight here in San Diego. So you need to size your battery based on days of autonomy. And in a situation like today, we don't have any sunlight to recharge our batteries. And we've only doubled our capacity with this battery, so we're counting on having sunlight in uh, the next day. Well, that could be a problem. So if you need to <clears throat> calculate or size your battery bank based upon how many days you want to be safeguarded against no sunlight, then take your amp hours, which were 54... Um, 0.16, and now instead of multiplying times 2, multiply times maybe 4 or 5, which are your days of autonomy. So that way you're safeguarded and you can use your battery bank without having to worry about reach, replacing the charge. Um, and uh, battery banks have to match the voltage of your inverter. Okay, You would size your inverter based upon the loads. So if you knew that all the watts and the uh, are calculated from all the devices inside the RV or the boat, and then you came up with about 800 watts total, then you would probably opt for a thousand watt inverter. But if you're over a thousand watts and you're uh, on loads, you're gonna need to size up to the next level of an inverter, okay? So your battery bank matches the voltage of your inverter. You can create a 12 volt battery bank with a sealed lead acid battery like this. This is 120, um, yeah, 120 amp hour SLA or VRLA or AGM battery. There's no liquid. Great, great deep cycle battery. I believe we sell this one for $145, uh, which is a smoking deal. And this will do a great job. Now, you can also create 12 volt battery banks by taking two 6 volt batteries. This is a flooded lead acid battery by Trojan the T105 RE, it's made for the Renewable Energy Series. I could take two of these six volt batteries, put them together in series, and have 12 volts. The six volt battery is going to last longer than the 12 volt battery because the internally these plates are massive, massively thick, 
and have a lot more ability to discharge and recharge in life cycles. So I hope I've helped you. I hope I haven't uh, confused you too much. But just keep in mind when you're sizing your uh, battery bank and you're sizing your solar, you always start with your loads first. Go back and measure your appliances and your devices that you're going to operate over time. It's a little bit of work, but you're going to write all that out and come up with your watt hours. And I already showed the formula, watt hours divided by the battery, the system voltage, which in this case was 12 volt, equals your amp hours. <clears throat> and then your amp hours over time of autonomy. Now, I didn't take into effect loss of efficiency for cable gauge or, you know, for your wires. You're going to have some losses with that. Your inverter is going to have some losses. But that's all pretty much information you can calculate into there if you start getting detailed. Hey, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, reach out to us at 619-448-5323 uh, or 619battery.com, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.